Hello, Mandela affected community, YouTube community, esoteric community. I'll have to be honest, it feels like this um, recording might be more of a broken record. I have a, I want to make a, another video. I'm just having a hard time of what video to make. Lately, if you don't know about this, I've been looking up a lot more, as I have in the past. I've come full cycle again. <laughs> into the seven hermetic principles. The seven hermetic principles ended up um, being a thing <laughs> in the ancient days of Egypt um, and became the origin. I could be entirely wrong on this, but I think there's an association with it and not with Gnosticism. And Gnosticism itself is arguably the um, prequel to the three Abrahamic religions we have these days and have had. Um, one thing I find interesting about the Seven Hermetic Principles is that they provide a bridge between science and spirituality. And I feel like if you are Mandela affected, we are living in real timing that bridge of science and spirituality. Um, as Terence McKinnon uh, nicknamed the Timothy Leary of the 90s once said, linear time is speeding up, not because time itself is speeding up, but because as we become more interconnected as a species through the internet and such, as we communicate more to us, to each other, especially interculturally around the world, that means more events are happening in correspondence to other events. Time tends to go slower when you have event B. I mean, if you have an event A happen and then event B happen in a longer span of time, your sense of time goes further. But since we have so much more transactions, so much more interactions all throughout the globe, and because we're all connected to the same consciousness source, if you will, I like to believe within my heart that our consciousness is literally that of the planets. If the planet's evolving and we're accelerating in time, then we've reached this renaissance point, this tipping point where people like us who experience the Mandela effect we are supposed to be the first wave of people, if you will, or if you look at Dolores Cannon's work, I like to think I'm a second wave of light workers. There's a third wave, which are the crystal children. They're coming online right now and are here now. You can feel their energy. Um, where the hell is I going with this? I have to express, too. As therapy for me, but also to help reach out to you, there's a lot of density going on. I'd be really surprised if there was one person who is really re experiencing Mandela Effect telling me they're not going through any drama right now. They're not going through any tough times. Um, because honestly, from my point of view in my life, you, you're you woken or you're not woken. You're going through shit. All right. In some ways, I feel blessed that I'm where I'm at because it's nice to be conscious to more intensity. I wouldn't like to be unconscious to it because then I'd feel more vulnerable of being controlled, you know. Um, but if you are experiencing that density, look at the blessing that's behind it. Referencing Ralph from Infinite Waters, great guy, great YouTuber, um, YouTube channel. Every lesson is a blessing, and every blessing is a lesson. And that's part of what it is to live 4D. That's part of what it is to be re-remembering and tuning into our innate multidimensional self. To remember first and foremost that every lesson is a blessing, every blessing is a lesson. And when it comes to not wanting to live the life that you fear living, your lower vibratory self, you have to do precisely that, not fear it. Um, me personally, I don't feel good or bad. It's not black and white these days. It's I'm feeling intense or depressed, but at the same time, I'm feeling that way because I feel more confident. I feel more reassured. And I feel like that's part of what it is to, say, live in the 4D. When you are Mandela affected such as myself and when you've gone through this process of not really not really socializing as much 
not that I don't talk to people. I love talking to people. I can't wait to get back in college because my favorite way to procrastinate on homework is intellectual conversations at the smoking section. <laughs> but, um, but the people that there's a, there's been a, a gap of distance between a lot of people that I thought were there for me. And I feel like a part of that's also part of the awakening. Um, we are experiencing the higher vibratory field, right? The Earth's frequency is rising. Um, so with that, we are at a space where every single one of us, interpersonally and internationally, um, have to deal... Chill out, dogs. Give me a minute. A minute for me, a second for you. We are at a point where... Everything that is a delusion, everything that is wrong, everything that is obviously unjust, it's in front of us. Like, I remember when I was 12 in 2006, it wasn't necessarily in front of us as much. Time was starting to speed up, right? The Mandela effect really hit the scene around 2010. <laughs> I didn't even... I myself wasn't even affected or even heard about it till 2016, which is funny because I swear I've had um, my uncle try to explain it to me before, uh, prior to, around 2012, and I just wasn't, boom, you know, I wasn't at that level yet, um, but you're going through tough times, Mandela affected people, it sounds weird, but celebrate it, celebrate it because you know that when you're able to face your fears, and when you're able to face that which you despise the most, usually within yourself, reality doesn't happen to us, it responds to us, then you're able to let it go. What's the secret to letting go? Knowing you were never really holding on to it in the first place. It's not about being anti-war. It's about being pro-peace. It's not about having a war on poverty. It's about having a larger system in play that isn't uh, compartmentalizing and um, reducing human existence to just another number, right? Um, so yeah, I'm still waking up. Coffee's good. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to title this video. Much love, y'all.